So, what about multi class problems? Many, many classes, not just 0 and 1. Right, I have like 5 classes that I could assign labels from. Right? So, what about multi class problems? For multi class problems, this kind of simplification is actually not possible. Right? So, we have to end up using some heuristic or the other. Right? So, typically, what people do is they end up doing some kind of very rough clustering on the values that attribute can take right and then try to define split points based on that okay and uh, yeah so i'm not going to go into the details of the heuristics i mean if if at all you are going to uh, use uh, this and you'll probably be using a package but uh, it'll be good to read up some of these if you are interested So, as you can imagine, as soon as you enter heuristic territory, right, uh, everyone can have their own favorite heuristic. So, there are many, many that have been proposed in the literature, such so as Guide, Quest, Cruise, Fact. So one of these annoying things in uh, many of this uh, machine learning data mining literature is people sometimes go out of their way to come up with uh, pronounceable uh, acronyms, you know. So, people have uh, clustering algorithms called chameleon. Imagine how much work they must have gone to produce chameleon as an acronym, right? And uh, <coughs> right. so, in fact, I, um, I think in fact, what you essentially end up doing is uh, you use some kind of indicator variables, right? For uh, each of these, right? This is something I think you suggested that, right? You use an indicator variable for each of these dimensions. And then they try to do some kind of dimensionality reduction on that, right? Try to pick a discriminating direction, right? And then uh, project onto that, and then use that dimension for splitting. Suppose I want to split on color, right? I'll not do it on color, so I'll create five variables, okay? Which is essentially one variable for color is red, one variable for color is blue, one variable for color is yellow, and one variable for color is magenta. But I'll not use those as boolean variables, right? And I'll try to find some kind of a projection from this five, five dimensional space onto a single dimension, and then treat that single dimension as a continuous dimension and try to do my projection on it. It, it essentially ends up doing some kind of clustering, <coughs> ends up doing some kind of clustering on that one dimension. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about clustering little later, but you but you know what clustering is. I already told you what the problem is in the very first class. Okay. The other approach to doing this is to <coughs> is to do multi way multi way splits. So what do I mean by that? If okay, if I decide to split on color, or I have to evaluate color, instead of splitting it into two groups, I'll split it into five groups. In our case, in our example, because we have five values, color can take. I'll split it into five groups, right? So, in, so in my uh, my decision tree, instead of always looking like this, will suddenly start looking like that. Okay. So, what are the problem with multi-way splits? Why don't we use multi-way splits all the time? Huh? Too much computation. In what way? Hmm? Not each of the class, right? Why are we determining the split points for each of the class? We are talking about an attribute that describes the data, right? Is, is, is that some confusion people are having here when I, when I talk about Categorical attributes, I am talking about attributes of the data other than the class label. Right? The class label will always be categorical. Right? If it is continuous, then it becomes a regression problem. Right? 
but then the values that are describing the data itself we normally assume that x comes from rp right so i was telling you that that need not be the case right if suppose i'm you are filling out a survey form you instead of filling in your age or something you're going to say less than 25 or something right so in such cases how will you test on that variable right how will i split on that variable that is the question we are asking so in, now instead of saying that is he less than 25 and between 25 and 35 will go left and greater than 35 and greater than 45 will go right instead of saying that i'm saying okay this will be less than 25 this will be between 25 and 35 this will be between 35 and 45 this will be greater than 45 or something like and splitting it all the ways in one go it really doesn't it's a little bit more computation because uh, when you are computing the score of each attribute right you have to do some additional work but it's not too much okay what is bad is it no Like the same issue, right? you don't know which part to, you can't, you need to yeah, have to take that full set or not and you might have a better solution if you have part of it in one and part of it in the other. Yeah, so interpretability becomes a casualty, right? So because if you are going to have multi-way splits, it becomes harder to interpret. Uh, so the tree becomes very sprawling, right? So remember one of the biggest advantages of decision trees is that they are easily interpretable now if i'm going to say okay there is a 10 way split and then you have to go down the 10 way split and go down further then it becomes harder to interpret right so like she was saying you might lose insights right uh, that's essentially saying that um, some some amount of interpret interpretability is lost but there's another problem with having sprawling trees yeah so variance is more uh, but the related problem to that right is the fact that if you do this multi way splits the amount of data that is available might come down drastically right so each path might have suppose well, let's say magenta is a rare color right so here that has nothing to do with this 0.55 okay magenta might be a rare color right it might be just only 10 10 people in my million customer database ever have magenta color shirts okay <laughs> right uh, but then 55 percent of them might be positive i do not know see that that has nothing to do with it right so so how predictive it is of the positive class has nothing to do with the the size of the uh, population there right but the po problem is i will only have 10 people here on which to make further decisions <coughs> right so if i'm going to do this multi way splits i'll run into data sparsity problems very quickly right does it make sense right. i mean these are all I, mean, I really can't ask you questions in exams or things like that with all of these things more like practical uh, guidelines for you to uh, when you actually start using these algorithms what are the things you should be watching out for right you should when you are using decision trees you should make sure that you are not running out of data points very quickly if you, if you run if you, some branch in your tree becomes sparse quickly right then it becomes uh, uh, harder for you to trust the tree <coughs> okay and this is related to the variance question because if you are making decisions based on very small number of data points then naturally the variance is going to be high yeah sir how would we split like uh, multi way splitting like for, for each attribute value you make a different different branch in the tree that's what is right so if you want me to actually fill in some things here how do we compare two choices there are no two choices when you pick and that's that's the whole point i'm eliminating the whole question of splitting and uh, picking a uh, split point right so at the color attribute i'll say color not is sorry color equal to r you go that way like that so this is essentially how your tree will look up right, so this is how it is going to look like yeah exactly so this is no so see
see you remember you compute the quote unquote the utility of splitting on a particular variable right. So, you pick a split split variable and then you find the optimal split point in that split variable and then you look at what is the least quality whatever you can achieve right. We looked at squared error, we looked at entropy and whole bunch of other things. So, you essentially look at that. So, here instead of looking at the best possible split point once you pick an attribute you split on all the values the attribute can take and then compute the measure whether it is squared error or entropy or whatever it is you can compute the measure. So, all the measures we talked about were not contingent on the split being binary right. Essentially you just looked at R1, R2 for simplicity sake, but I could have had R1, R2, R3, R4, R5 and I was computing the expression. If you do not and if you cannot relate to what I am saying just flip back if you actually were taking notes you would know what I mean right. So, we are, when we are looking at uh, the squared error uh, measure. Right. I wrote down as R1 and R2 where R1 was it is lesser than J and R2 is greater than J or something right or oh, yes whatever whatever is the split point. But here we do not there is no choice of what is an optimal split point here once you pick an attribute you split on all the values it can take. So, it becomes sprawling. So, that leads to So, if you are doing this multi way splits it is going to naturally favor attributes with more values. So, let us say I have color and then I have something else like age and color has 5 values and age has like 15 different bins I have split age into right. So, when I split on color I will split into a 5 way branch when I split on age I will split into 15 way branch right. Of course, there can be exceptions, but I would more likely to find purer leaves when I split into 15 than when I split into 5 right. I split it into 15 ways I am more likely to find leaves that are pure right. If I split into 5 ways I am less likely to find leaves that are pure right. So, just pure in the sense they have the same class right. Um, so, th this kind of multi way splits tends to favor attributes with more values. Right. So, that is not necessarily the best way of doing the splits because you might not be generalizing properly later right. So, for this people use uh, all kinds of tricks. So, the very popular uh, decision tree algorithm called C 4.5 which uses something called gain ratio. So, people recall information gain as we spoke about in the last class it is related to entropy right the information gain thing. So, information gain tells you how much less information you need right by splitting on a particular attribute for encoding the class labels right. So, what a gain ratio says is hey forget about the fact that I have this va this variable suppose if I split the data into 10 ways randomly. How much information would I gain? Right? Versus splitting it into ten ways based on this attribute. You see the difference? I take the data, split it into just randomly split it into ten groups, right? Or I take the data and split it into ten groups based on this attribute. Okay? So that ratio is what I will use. So, if I can just if I could have arbitrarily split the data into 10 groups and I would have still gained the same information as splitting on this attribute then I do not want to split on this attribute right it is no better than random right and heaven forbid if the ratio is less than 1 I really do not want this right. So, the ratio should be higher than 1 so that is what I will be looking for. So, I can instead of using information gain I will use gain ratio and likewise you can order this for any of the attribute uh, any of the measures that you use right you can always adjust it for random splits right. So, that is essentially what we 
end up doing, right? So, do you gain anything special about expressive power for the tree by doing multi weight splits? Does the tree become more expressive in the sense that can it represent more functions than you could with binary splits? No, whatever I do with this multi weight splits, I can do recursive binary splits and I can achieve that. It's not adding to the expressivity, it just avoids the question of picking a split point, right. That is not a trivial thing, okay. You have to come up with all kinds of heuristic to split split points, uh, to pick split points, but uh, still, if you can, okay, the recommendation is to avoid multi way splits, right, and stick with binary splits. Uh, but in some cases, it is just easier to do this, especially if the, the number of ways in which you will split is small enough. Okay, if you are not if you are not going to split it into 20 different things or for 50 different things right you can still do multi way splits like 5 or 6 should be fine. 